When looking to buy a mid-range to mainstream graphics card for your gaming PC, you're probably tossing up between a GeForce RTX 5060 Ti or a Radeon RX 9060 XT. In today's video, we'll be comparing these GPUs with multiple upscaling modes enabled to see which model performs the best in realistic gaming configurations. We know a lot of you are going to be using DLSS 4 on a GeForce GPU, FSR 4 on a Radeon GPU. This video has that performance data. This will allow us to uncover a range of different things. You'll be able to see the native and upscaled FPS performance of these cards in various games, giving you an idea of the experience you'll get while using one. We'll see whether DLSS 4 or FSR 4 provides a bigger uplift, and whether that changes the overall performance difference between these graphics cards, and you'll get to see the benefit of using balanced or performance mode upscaling instead of quality, which is useful now that modern upscaling technologies are usable at lower modes. But before we get to that, Today's video is sponsored by Gigabyte's GeForce RTX 50 series gaming laptops. The Aorus Master 18 and 16 are super high performance beasts with up to RTX 5090 laptop graphics, stunning 240Hz HDR displays, and top end features like a PCIe Gen 5 SSD and Wi Fi 7. The Aero X16 Copilot Plus PC is the perfect choice for gamers and creators on the go with a portable chassis, up to RTX 5070 laptop graphics, and a high resolution Pantone validated display. The gaming A16 and A16 Pro are also available with up to RTX 5080 laptop graphics, wind force cooling and overall great bang for buck. With Nvidia GeForce RTX graphics you have access to superb performance and cutting edge features like DLSS 4 transformer model upscaling and 4x multi frame generation. To learn more about Gigabyte's RTX 50 series gaming laptops, check the links in the description. The idea with this video is to give you more data and a different set of data than our day one review, which largely focuses on native performance at a range of resolutions. Testing different upscaling modes like this on top of all of the other testing is super time consuming, which is why we primarily focus on the apples to apples data in the initial review. But these cards have been out for a little while now, perfect opportunity to dive into additional upscaling testing. We've also now got quite a lot of upscaling content on the channel, which is important to brush up on given that DLSS 4 and FSR 4 do not output an identical image, meaning any performance testing done this way is not apples to apples. Our in-depth videos show what these upscalers do, the visual differences between DLSS 4 and FSR 4, and also how each of the upscaling settings compare. Those videos are important companions that go hand in hand with these performance oriented videos. Today I'll be testing 15 titles at 1440p that support both DLSS 4 and FSR 4, and in those games I'll be testing the three main upscaling modes, quality, balanced, and performance, in addition to native TAA. The TAA output is identical visually on both cards, so it's a nice reference point, and then of course DLSS 4 is used on the RTX 5060 Ti and FSR 4 on the RX 9060 XT. On the GeForce card, most titles have been upgraded to DLSS 4 using the driver override feature set to use the latest upscaling model. A couple of titles have native DLSS 4 support, in those cases the transformer model is set in-game and the latest model is set in the driver. On the Radeon card, all games are set to use FSR 4 via the toggle in the driver software. For testing today, we have a really great situation on our hands because I've got the ASUS Prime models of both the 5060 Ti 16GB and 9060 XT 16GB. This just adds another really interesting real world component to the testing because these are supposed to be the same sort of model from the same brand. The Prime is ASUS's mid-range model, better than the Dual, not as good as the Tough Gaming. Both are factory overclocked to similar levels, both have similar coolers and designs. They're not identical, but pretty similar. And the price premium over base MSRP is also similar. In the United States, the Prime 5060 Ti 16GB is $530 US right now, so a $100 premium over the card's $430 MSRP, while the Prime 9060 XT 16GB is $440, so it's a $90 premium over the $350 MSRP. Those are, of course, quite high premiums, but that's the state of the GPU market in the US right now, where neither GPU is available at MSRP. The CPU being used here is the Ryzen 7 9800X3D, 32GB of DDR5 6000CL30 memory, and the very latest game updates, Windows updates, and drivers have been used. So 577.00 for NVIDIA, 25.6.3 for AMD. Let's get into it. 
Starting off with Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, there's very little difference between these models at native 1440p. Those margins don't change much when upscaling either. The 5060 Ti goes from being 3% faster using native TAA, to 1% faster using quality upscaling, 2% faster using balanced, and 2% faster using performance. These are all within the margin we deem to be a tie, so on both brands of GPU, quality upscaling is providing a 19% performance uplift at 1440p using the highest in-game preset. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is quite playable on these mid-range GPUs, even though I'm testing on the highest preset with ray tracing enabled and set to high. In this situation, the GeForce GPU is 14% faster across the board, regardless of the upscaling setting used. Despite the 5060 Ti being better at ray tracing, the 9060 XT retains playable performance here, as with FSR 4 on the quality mode, you're getting 75 FPS on average, which is good for this type of game. The Last of Us Part 1 begins with a situation where both graphics cards are highly comparable using the Ultra preset. At native 1440p, both deliver over 60fps, with the GeForce card 3% ahead, growing to 4% when using quality upscaling. Interestingly, this margin grows slightly at lower modes like balanced and performance, where now the 5060 Ti using DLSS 4 is 6-7% faster. FSR 4 isn't scaling quite as well in this title, but the balanced mode still delivers a 37% uplift over native TAA, compared to 42% for DLSS 4 on the GeForce GPU. In Spider-Man 2 I'm using the very high preset with ray tracing set to very high, and this is a more unusual situation. At native 1440p, the GeForce GPU is slightly ahead with a 5% performance lead, but this lead grows with upscaling enabled. DLSS 4 seems to work a bit better in this game, with the quality mode offering a 49% increase in average FPS on the 5060 Ti, compared to just 33% for FSR 4 on the 9060 XT. This means when we compare quality upscaling, the GeForce card extends its lead to 16%, and this grows to 20% using balanced upscaling. Both models are capable of a 60fps average using upscaling with these settings, which is certainly playable, but the GeForce card is noticeably faster. The Last of Us Part 2 delivers similar average performance comparing the two GPUs at native 1440p, though the 9060 XT offers higher 1% loads. What happens when we enable upscaling is the GeForce card scales a little better on average, offering a 5-7% performance lead on the Radeon card, but in 1% loads the two models are evenly matched in the area we tested. Ghost of Tsushima is one of the more favourable games to Radeon out of the selection we tested. Here the 9060 XT is a couple of percent faster in all of the configurations, though we're basically talking about a tie, and of course both models deliver highly playable performance. No weird scaling is happening here. Stalker 2 is another relatively straightforward example. The RTX 5060 Ti starts out offering a 7% higher frame rate, and this is maintained within 1 or 2 percentage points when upscaling is used. The Epic preset at 1440p is a bit of a struggle in the most intensive areas on both of these cards, with the 5060 Ti only reaching a 60fps average with quality upscaling, and the 9060 XT with a balanced upscaling. 16GB of VRAM is also essential to get this level of performance as we showed in the Day 1 review. Marvel Rivals runs better on the RTX 5060 Ti when using the Ultra preset, delivering 12% higher performance at native 1440p, and 11% higher performance using quality upscaling. However, in a reverse of situations seen in earlier games tested, the Radeon card actually gains ground at lower modes. Balanced upscaling is just 7% faster on GeForce, and 6% using performance. When actually playing this game, you'll probably want to downgrade the preset from Ultra to something lower, as neither model is offering stunning performance for a multiplayer title with upscaling enabled. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is reminiscent of what we saw earlier with Spider-Man 2, even though the game engine is completely different. At native 1440p, the margins between these cards are quite close, just 3% in favour of Team Green. But when we enable quality upscaling, the 5060 Ti gets 36% faster, while the 9060 XT only gets 28% faster. This means the GeForce model is at least 10% faster now when upscaling is used, and is able to break the 100fps barrier with the balanced mode. Star Wars Outlaws is the opposite situation. At native 1440p, the RTX 5060 Ti is 7% faster, but then with quality upscaling enabled, now the Radeon card is in the lead. The 9060 XT is 45% faster using quality FSR 4 than native, while the 5060 Ti becomes just 22% faster. 
This significant gap in performance now makes the Radeon model 10% faster, though the margin shrinks when lower modes are used. Hunt Showdown, for whatever reason, runs terribly on Radeon GPUs, and this is something we found previously when testing the RX 9070 XT. The 9060 XT 16GB gets easily beaten at native 1440p with the GeForce model 45% faster, and while this margin does shrink to 29% when quality upscaling is used, the Radeon model is still far behind. For example, FSR4 performance only matches DLSS4 quality results across these cards, and the Radeon model struggles to get past 60fps. Seems AMD needs to do a bit more work on this title, even though it does support FSR4 already. God of War Ragnarok performs quite well on both cards, though I'm testing one of the most intensive areas i found in the game, and this does hurt 1% lows for part of the benchmark run. Interestingly, average performance is quite similar between these GPUs, either when using native rendering or upscaling, but 1% lows are clearly superior on the Radeon card. Stellar Blade is another title that for whatever reason doesn't run super well on the RX 9060 XT. At native 1440p, the GeForce card is 29% faster, and this sort of margin grows slightly when upscaling is used. The margins in 1% lows are even higher in this intensive fireball beach area at the start of the game, with quality upscaling on the 5060 Ti delivering 55% higher 1% lows, another title that AMD needs to optimise a bit better. Last game I'm looking at is F125. This is another example of the Radeon card gaining ground when upscaling is used. The ultra-high preset enables ray tracing effects, and at native 1440p the 5060 Ti is 9% faster. But when quality upscaling is used, the average frame rate equalizes between the GPUs, though the GeForce model still provides a noticeably higher 1% low. Still, even in 1% lows, the 5060 Ti goes from being 28% faster natively to 14% faster using quality upscaling, so FSR is scaling a bit better there. Here are the average results across the 15 games calculated using a GeoMean. What's interesting here is that even though we saw a range of different outcomes from upscaling, sometimes the 5060 Ti would get faster relative to the 9060 XT, sometimes the 9060 XT would get faster, on average the margins between the products are quite similar. In this sample of 15 games, I found the 5060 Ti 16GB was 9% faster on average at native 1440p. When quality upscaling is used, the 5060 Ti ended up 10% faster, then 10% faster again using balanced upscaling, and 9% faster using performance upscaling. This is good news for people that bought either of these cards based on day one results benchmarked using apples to apples native rendering. In a real world scenario where someone uses DLSS4 or FSR4 upscaling while gaming, the relative performance difference between the cards doesn't change. Now of course you could argue that the image quality is different between DLSS4 and FSR4, so in some games maybe quality versus balanced is subjectively closer or a better matchup or whatever, but when we're talking about the same modes, we're getting the same margins. This means the typical performance uplift from enabling upscaling is similar on these GPUs as well. Quality upscaling on average was about 30% faster than native rendering, balanced upscaling about 45% faster, and performance upscaling about 55% faster. This is all from games that run around 60 FPS natively. You can expect a greater uplift coming from a lower baseline FPS and a smaller uplift from a higher baseline FPS. We're also seeing about a 10% improvement when dropping the upscaling mode from quality to balanced, which I feel is the minimum acceptable setting to use while gaming at 1440p with both DLSS4 and FSR4. Performance upscaling is 8 to 9% faster again, but more compromised visually. Now you might have noticed that these results are more in favour of the RTX 5060 Ti than our day one review of the 9060 XT, which found the 5060 Ti was just 1% faster on average at 1440p. This is almost entirely down to the game selection, which for this sort of video is limited to titles that support both of the latest upscaling technologies. This sample includes games that run much better on GeForce, like Assassin's Creed Shadows and Stellar Blade, neither of which featured in our day one content. Unfortunately, some of the better Radeon games, like Call of Duty Black Ops 6, couldn't be featured here as it doesn't support DLSS 4 right now. Ultimately, these results don't change our thoughts on the GeForce RTX 5060 Ti and Radeon RX 9060 XT 16GB models all that much. With upscaling enabled, the margins between these GPUs remains the same as when testing with native rendering, so no need to adjust any recommendations. The sample of games we tested that support both DLSS4 and FSR4 is a little more favourable to the GeForce model than our day one sample of games, but outside of that, these results are as expected. 
What's good to see is that upscaling delivers very playable performance in a lot of the titles we examined. In 12 of the 15 games, tested using 1440p ultra settings, upscaling using acceptable modes like quality or balanced delivered at least 60fps in the areas we tested. Many of the games were running at 80 or 90 FPS with quality upscaling, which is a great experience on a mid-range to mainstream graphics card. And this is just regular old upscaling, not frame generation getting us to those numbers. Right now, the go-to option in this price range is still the Radeon RX 9060 XT 16GB, which can be found for as low as $360 to $370 US on Newegg right now. The GeForce RTX 5060 Ti 16GB is occasionally available for $450, but is more commonly at least $480. This makes the GeForce card 25-30% to more expensive for best case 10% better average performance, as we showed today comparing quality upscaling at 1440p, and I expect the margin to be in the single digits across a broader sample of games. The bigger difference between these products isn't so much the performance, but the actual overall feature quality of the upscaling itself. DLSS 4 generally looks better than FSR 4 at resolutions you'd expect to use with the mainstream GPU like 1440p. Now, FSR 4 is certainly very usable and has its strengths, but DLSS 4 generally produces better stability. You can learn a lot more about that in our FSR 4 versus DLSS 4 videos. On top of that, Nvidia simply offers much broader game support. AMD has done a reasonable job of keeping up with FSR 4 support, especially with titles released in 2025, but the total list is still quite small and doesn't include many popular older games people still play today. In any sort of comparison between DLSS 4 and a game that doesn't support FSR 4 so is using older versions of FSR 4, or even if we say the comparison was DLSS 3 and older FSR 4, it's really not a contest, DLSS is significantly better. AMD has made a promising start here, but it still has a long way to go in that front. Anyway, that's it for this little look at the GeForce RTX 5060 Ti, Radeon RX 9060 XT with upscaling enabled. Thought that might be useful since we've just been going through some of the quality settings, and of course we've done a lot of other testing of upscaling on the channel recently, so check all that stuff out. If you're interested in supporting Hardware Unboxed and the testing that we do here, then please consider signing up to our Patreon page. Links to that is in the description below. If you sign up, you get access to pretty cool benefits and bonuses, BTS content, monthly live streams. We've got the Discord chat, great place to chat about tech and all that sort of thing, and plenty of other good stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.